Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick follow-up video to one I did the other day, and in fact the one I did the other day is going to get deleted because I now know that there was some inaccurate information in there and I don't like putting out videos that I know have inaccurate information. Opinions are one thing, but actual factual information is another. And when I did some testing the other day on the total dissolved solids, uh, long story short, when I was using this meter, it's only capable of going up to uh, three digits. And I thought it just topped out at three digits. If you went beyond 999 parts per million, it simply pegged out, so to speak, and you didn't get an accurate reading. So when I did the test, I was surprised to see the low, low number I was getting from adding some sodium chloride to the water. And it was showing me like 175 parts per million or something, which I thought was really low. Uh, one of my viewers pointed out that these will actually have a little flashing light that indicates times 10 on it, which I had no idea was even there. And I checked again this morning, and sure enough, it was flashing times 10. So instead of being 178 parts per million, it was 1,780 parts per million, which is a big difference in total dissolved solids. So I went around this morning. I was looking for... The instructions to this one this is a newer one that I've bought because I had lost faith in my older one I wasn't quite sure if it was working right uh, I now know it probably is but in looking for the instructions for this one I found my old one and this one has a four digit capacity so this is I only made up a half gallon of water but it's a half gallon of water with a half a teaspoon of salt so we can call it one gallon for one teaspoon and I'm getting a little bit of a discrepancy between both my meters. This meter seems to be reading a little higher than this one. And when we did the test in my tap water, they were about 50 points apart, this one being the higher number. And then when I did it in this water that's got lots of stuff in it with the salt in it, the discrepancy was even higher. So right now, let me hit the hold button and you'll be able to see it if I can find the hold button. So that's what we're actually looking at here is 2,113 parts per million. But if we use this meter, we're going to get a bit of a discrepancy there because the higher the number goes, the wider off it is. That just kind of makes sense when something's not quite accurate. The further you go away from center, the less accurate it's going to get. Uh, long story short, though, I did... See, that's 1,840. You see that little flashing light there to the right? I never noticed that before. So that's the times 10. So we've got 1,840 on this test, and then we've got 2,113 on that test. So they're pretty close, but at those high numbers, we're starting to get off by, you know, well over 100 points by then. So I took both of these upstairs, and I put them in the tank in question. I thought maybe I had really high TDS in that tank, and then after realizing that this meter is a times 10, I thought, oh boy, maybe, maybe the numbers in there are way higher than I thought. So I took both of them upstairs, I measured them. Oddly, this one came out a little lower at 477 parts per million and this one came out at 486 parts per million so they were very close and it was still I, I do trust this meter I've calibrated it myself I've tested it against professionals meters that spent lots of money on their meters and I was within two parts per million so I trust this one this one may need to be calibrated it seems to be a little off but they're both in the ballpark and I just wanted to make sure that nobody was out there thinking that um, a teaspoon of salt was going to give them 150 parts per million. It's more like 1,500 parts per million, and I felt that that was worth making uh, a correction for. So not really anything to do with my fish tank. It does reassure me, though, that the um, total dissolved solids I have in my tank upstairs are certainly suitable for those barbs to go in, and I think probably a little bit of calcium and magnesium in my water wouldn't hurt either. So thanks for watching another what I think of as a boring video of just staring at some bottles and jars of water and test meters and stuff like that. But thanks for watching anyway. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.